We have to go to the communities Mm -hmm. and really, you know, give them that type of opportunity to get the education. Mm -hmm. They're not going to come out. And a friend of mine, she's uh, one of the founders of the Hood Incubator, Lenise Martin. She was one of the ones that told us what was going on in Oakland. It's the same kind of situation. People don't even believe there's an equity program up there, so they don't even try to even apply. Mm -hmm. So, again, we've got to do that outreach. That's why I think what you guys are doing is beautiful because, again, when you're talking about recycling dollars, that's very important for what's going to happen in the next, like, five, ten years in our industry, especially if we plan to support our people of color in ownership. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because it's not just about consumers. Right. It's about ownership. And that's mm-hmm. why I tell people, okay, it's okay that you're spending your dollars, you know, in our own communities. But what about ownership? Mm-hmm. We need to own. Right. Yeah, we right. have to own. Okay, we, that's yeah, that's yeah. very key. Yeah. And we got to recycle those dollars in our communities. And what people have to realize is that especially L.A., we're the biggest market in the world for cannabis. Mm-hmm. Okay, so think about it. What about the demographics as far as people of color? Interesting. Okay. Mm-hmm. Interesting. We are the consumer dollars. Right. Exactly. Ex- oh, yeah, we okay. are. We're $1.3 trillion consumer. <laughs> that being said, we have to make everyone understand that unless they are willing to work with us and support us, mm-hmm. then we can guide those people of color dollars to where we want them exactly. as long as we stick together. Right. And so that's going to be a key component to getting cooperation. Mm-hmm. You know, seriously. And, so. and, it, and it's kind of part of what I was saying, collective uh, economics, because some won't be able to move in this industry because of financial li- uh, limitations and barriers, but others will. So you can help. And, I, and someone asked me the other day, where should we fit? I said, well, being an investor is a big thing, especially if you can't get dollars anywhere else and becoming a partner instead of everybody trying to do it by themselves. Right. Exactly. Let's become a partner. Right. So one of the things that Think and Grow Lab is doing is creating a distribution right. of process and bringing everybody in in mm-hmm. a collective environment right. Right. so that you can pool your resources and then take those resources and reinvest them back into the community or to a community pot, very much like they do in the Asian community. They well, help well, each other. You don't other. have Koreans, right, so that's exactly, exactly what that's we do. That's exactly yeah. what happens, right? You, yes, that's you, exactly you what we do. You have this cooperative. You yeah. go there, I'm going to start a business. Absolutely. Here's your investment. Right. You grow your business. Then you come back and you put back in. And, 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 and that way the pot is always full. And right. it happens that same way in the Jewish community. Right. And, every, and we have to adopt that principle. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and I think the key here is to really trust. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, you really have to trust your people. Mm -hmm. If you don't trust, again, you go back to that mentality of, oh, I got to do it on my own. It's all about me. And it just doesn't work that way. Like you said, we have to be willing to accept the support and ask for the support. Exactly. You know, and and what's really exciting is right now um, we're in the first phases of our incubator, which we're going to be able to assist people in funding their businesses. So you tell know. us tell us a little bit about your incubator process, how that works, the purpose of it, and how do you see others in the community being benefited from that? Okay, well, Women Above Ground was started because when I first started in the industry, I didn't see too many people that looked like me. Right. You know, I was going to networking events, primarily, you know, women um, networking events. Mm-hmm. And I, I came out more confused than when I went in. You mm-hmm. know, and I went in for knowledge. I went in for, you know, just some like sisterhood. I went in for some support. <laughs> and I came out feeling not so welcome and uh-huh. just really confused about what I want to do in the industry. Right. Mm-hmm. So I kind of had to make my way. I found a mentor eventually and that helped quite a bit. So I always, I always recommend mentorship. Mm-hmm. That's very key. Mm-hmm. Then you, you, you will spend a, you, you won't waste a lot of time mm-hmm. right you know on trying to figure it out so mm-hmm. that's very key and then um, and then I just wanted to make a safe place for people of color to get involved in the industry and knowing that they can get some education and some knowledge and some resources you know um, without feeling excluded because that's how you really feel in this industry mm. you know because okay. you have white boys that have been doing this a long time yeah. that are not very welcoming so, and you have a lot of these um, cannabis attorneys right now, and, and, and that term, cannabis attorney, really bothers me because who's really a cannabis attorney? Uh, new, we're, so we're, we're not even a legal be... business. <laughs> right, so exactly. when did you become a cannabis attorney? <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, uh, 
right. to keep it real. But yeah. so, so my thing is that now you've got these attorneys that now call themselves cannabis attorneys that are taking a lot of money from a lot of people to do applications and other things that they're really not qualified to do. Right. Mm. You know, and what they really do is they just go subcontract out. Mm -hmm. You know, consultants that know what they're doing that right. have been doing this for years right. and charging an extra twenty, thirty thousand. Right. You know, to do right. something that they should not even be doing. It's so, really a conflict. So, again, that's why the awareness, the awareness and the knowledge mm -hmm. is yes. important. Yes, resources, mm -hmm. have, you know, being guided towards the, the resources and the right people and, you know, and the right kind of networking. I mean, that that's so key to this. And this is what we want to be able to provide. And, in fact, we've just started a new organization called the National um, Diversity and Inclusion Cannabis Alliance. And it's just a lot of the leaders from different organizations that have all come together so that we can put our resources together to be thought leaders to make sure that we can make things happen for our people of color because mm -hmm. that's going to be key. So when we start, like, our incubator funds, our um, educational programs, um, you know, because we want to be able to have people um, be able to, create their own business plans, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, that are viable, right. mm -hmm. you know, make sure that they are being guided towards the right people that can help them with applications mm -hmm. that will actually be approved, mm -hmm. you know, without be, having to pay seventy five to 100000 to get that application done. Right, right. exactly, because that's know. one of the issues, so, because they know there's so much cash, because you can't bank the money, so they know the ones that are already in the business have, you know, goo gobs money somewhere, uh, because they can't put them, so it's not being recycled back in, right? So, yeah, they are are going to be your predators out there knowing that it's a very cash fluid will be a very cash fluid business well, well and, and, and but the thing about it is is that there's only certain areas of the business that you can't put in the bank but people have gotten really creative as far as being able to put money in banks okay but there's there and this is another thing that that i always i, I always like to really um I would say impress on the people I speak to because I speak quite a bit around the nation. Mm -hmm. And it's about the ancillary parts of cannabis. Um, I remember I did a radio show in Chicago, mm -hmm. and a preacher called me after the show, him mm -hmm. and his wife, and he, mm -hmm. she was in the healthcare industry. And he said, You know, there's something that you said that was very interesting. He said, You talked about generational wealth. He said, That's the part I want to know about. Mm -hmm. And he said, My wife, she's in to help the healthcare industry, and mm -hmm. we heard about your cream, that glass jar. She'd love to be able to distribute, you know, because she runs into a lot of her patients that have the bacterial viruses, the mm -hmm. MRSA, the skin infections, psoriasis, things like that. And so we were talking on that level. So it wasn't about just so much the cannabis plan and getting high. It was more about what can it do for you and your family? Mm -hmm. You know, how does it fit into your life lifestyle? Mm -hmm. For some people, touching the plan is great. Right. Some mm -hmm. people are cultivators, and they've been doing it for years, and it's wonderful. Some mm -hmm. people have had dispensaries for years. But again, now you have a whole just plethora of ancillary in, what you know, you, you companies that so you can many, open. Right, exactly. Like, think about HR companies, marketing companies, PR companies, security. I mean, anything that you would need now in mainstream businesses, you are going to need in the cannabis industry. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Now, can, can you tell us a little bit about your product itself that you've bottled, the cream? So we can hear about the significance of it and how Absolutely. people can benefit from it. Absolutely. And I think it's, this is very important because the people need to understand that the cannabis plant is more than just the THC part of it. Mm -hmm. You know, you have the CBD, which is the medicinal end, and then also the terpenes, which I feel are more effective in formulas mm -hmm. than THC or CBD. So and that's, that's what's very effective in my cream is mm. the terpenes. I have 14 different organic extracts, a lot of them being things like oregano oil extract, tea tree, just things that you can get Natural. in your normal whole, yeah, yeah, your right. whole food stores, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, but the key to the MRSA was a certain terpene that's in cannabis. And I...